right now all over the world. Gamers are crying out because they want to be able to build their dream gaming PC and they can't because there's currently a shortage on graphics cards and that shortage is expected to last all the way until next year. This has caused many people to go out and buy all the components for their computer except for the graphics card and build boxes that look nice and are 95% complete but don't serve the function that they're supposed to. Well, I say enough. If you're looking to do a custom build that has all the RGB and cable management that you could ever want and will tide you over until things calm down, I have the solution for you. This is the GamerPi RGB. It's got all that big PC energy and it's not even going to break your wallet. Just like the services from today's sponsor, PCBWay won't break your wallet when you need custom PCBs. More on them later in the video. The GamerPi RGB case is a case that's designed to look like a full-fledged gaming PC, just a whole lot smaller. It's designed to have great cooling, excellent cable management, and it addresses an issue that I've had with the Pi in pretty much every case that I've ever dealt with. You see, no matter how you design a case, you have to decide whether or not the power and HDMI come off the back or the USB ports come off the back. In this case, I've gone ahead and designed the case to move the USB ports right next to the HDMI and power. That way, all the cables come off the back, just like on a traditional PC. The other feature that's included is something that Linus Tech Tips has taught us has to be in absolutely every gaming computer ever. A tasteful amount of RGB to show off the awesomeness of your build. Just like you can show off the awesomeness of your build in this retro arcade t-shirt from printandplay.ca. So the first step for designing this was to design the case, and I did this in Fusion 360. I went in with a list of things that I wanted to incorporate. So I wanted lots of cooling, which meant space for two 40mm RGB fans in the front, plus a substantial cooler on the Pi itself. I wanted a window so you could see all that RGB action in effect. I wanted an OLED display on the side to monitor things like the IP address, the current temperature of the Pi, and the storage, and I wanted to relocate all those USB ports to the back. I also wanted to have as much of the wiring inside hidden as possible. Well, with the design finished, I sent my printed parts off to be 3D printed. Printing was handled by my Prusa Mark 3S, and the parts came out very, very clean. The only other thing we needed to get fabricated was a PCB. So I designed a PCB in KiCad that allowed me to not only relocate the USB ports from the underneath of this case to the back, but also created power rails for my additional fans. Once the board was designed, I sent it off to PCB Wafer Manufacturing, and in less than a week, I got my case. And after cracking into the box and peeling away the wrappers, I was able to cut in and I was now holding five copies of the very first PCB that I had ever designed. The next step was to fit all of my components to the board. And to my surprise, every single component snapped into place perfectly. From there, all I had to do was solder each component into place to make the connection permanent. Since I had my soldering iron out, I went ahead and made some jumper cables to connect the USB ports from the Pi to the expansion board. I did this by taking some male USB connectors and soldering some jumper cables to them. Since I'm going to be passing 5 volt and ground to the Pi already, all I had to worry about was the data pins, which is the two middle ones on the USB connection. I wanted this case to be as flexible as possible, just like an actual PC case. So I designed an IO shield for the back. This means that you can use the same case for a Pi 2, Pi 3, Pi 4, and hopefully if they release a Pi 5, I can just design another IO shield for that and it'll be ready to grow with you. I mounted a 0.96 inch OLED display on the right panel and then I wired it to the three volt rail on the Pi as well as the I2C bus. I designed some 3D printable templates for cutting out the acrylic on the side of the case as well as the mesh on the front. The mesh on the front is from a 140 millimeter fan filter. I laid the template on top of it and then using a utility knife, I slowly traced around it. I was then able to snap the mesh where I traced around it and get a perfectly fitting piece. The story for the acrylic was pretty much the same. I laid the template down on it and then I scored the acrylic with the utility knife. I did learn a rather unfortunate lesson here though. You really want to make sure that you score through the plexiglass as much as possible. I didn't go as many times as I probably should have and when I went to snap it off I lost a corner. Now, when it comes down to it, this was still usable because the corner is actually hidden by the curve of the case, but it would have been a better fit if I'd gotten a perfectly cut square piece. The main cooling solution in this case is this key. 
The main cooling component in this build is this ice tower cooler that I bought from GeekPie on Amazon. The installation is pretty simple. You install your Pi into the case and then secure it using the brass standoffs that are included in this kit. You then place a thermal pad on the CPU of the Pi to help with heat transfer between the Pi and the heatsink. Then you install the heatsink and cooler to the brass standoffs using the included screws, which puts pressure on the thermal pad and onto the Pi itself. With all the components installed, all that was left to do was wire things up. So first I connected the USB connections to my Pi and then connected them to my daughter board on the back. I also ran the 5 volts in ground from the Pi to the daughter board as well. And from there, I was able to connect all of my fans to it as well to power them. The final size of this case is pretty tiny. It measures four inches deep by three and a half inches wide by four and a half inches tall. That's pretty impressive considering all the extra hardware we stuffed into here. And it isn't even that full. You can see through the window that everything is nice and clean. And of course, a build is only as good as its accessories. For the display, I used an 8.9 inch widescreen panel that I ordered from AliExpress. Then I designed and 3D printed a gamer style monitor case for it that allows me to tilt it up and down. I then coupled the entire thing with a traveler mouse that has a retractable cord and a minuscule sized Bluetooth keyboard. These things really complete the look even though their size makes them borderline unusable. For an operating system, I'm using the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS, previously known as Raspbian. I'm using the 32-bit version even though there is a 64-bit version available that will run on this. This is because a lot of the applications I want to run with it don't yet have hardware acceleration, so for now I'm better off sticking with 32-bit. And because we've got all that awesome cooling in here, we're going to do what all gamers do to their gamer PCs. We're going to overclock the shit out of it. You can overclock your Pi by editing the config.txt file in the root of your SD card or you can navigate to slash boot slash config.txt right on your Pi. From there, we are able to enter in the overclock values and try to push it all the way to 2.147 gigahertz. But unfortunately, even putting the voltages up as high as safely possible, I wasn't able to get it to boot. So at this point, I voided the warranty by overriding that voltage and I set it all the way up to 11. No, I'm just kidding. It turned out all I had to do to get mine to boot was to go from the safe number of six to the slightly less safe number of seven, and we were up and running and stable. So with my system running stable, now it was time to get some software loaded on it. At this point, if you want to do some office work, some retro gaming, some video editing, or some image editing, you can do that on your Pi with mixed results. For basic video editing, if you want to do some cropping or some trimming, you can use OpenShot to do that on the Pi. Now the performance isn't going to be as good as on an actual video editing machine, but you can get by if it's all you have. For image editing, you can use GIMP, or the GNU Image Manipulation Program. This is an image editor that's available on multiple platforms, and the Raspberry Pi is no exception. And when it comes to office work, LibreOffice has you covered. It's got everything you'd expect out of an office suite, including a word processor and a spreadsheet application. But what if you want to take this and run some modern day gaming titles on it? Is that possible? Well, yes, sort of. If you already have a gaming PC somewhere on your network, you can install Steam Link on this. Now, Steam Link allows you to play games remotely using your Pi. Obviously, this doesn't address the issue of missing graphics cards, but if you were looking to build, say, a secondary gaming PC for your living room, instead of doing that, you could build a Pi, install Steam Link, and then play remotely with just one computer. Now, what about retro games? Well, one solution would be to install RetroPie onto a microSD card and swap it out whenever you wanted to play. But the solution I liked for this was installing RetroPie as an application in Raspbian. You can simply download the RetroPie installation script, run it, and several hours later, you'll have a full-fledged RetroPie install in here. All you have to do is type emulation station from the command line, and you're ready to go into retro gaming bliss. You can also create an icon for it on your desktop, but you have to make sure that you run it in console mode. If you fail to run it in console mode, then games will fail to launch, it'll just crash back to the menu. In my port relocation, I left out the relocation of the Ethernet port. The reason for this is I've generally just stuck with Wi-Fi on my Pis and I haven't used the Ethernet port that much. Although I will say that when I was using Steam Link and my Pi was set up in the basement and my wireless router was upstairs, I was getting some lag. So I may do a V2 of this where I add the Ethernet port relocation as well. Let me know what you guys think of that in the comments below. Well, this may not add to the PC Master Race, but I think it certainly does complement it. 
It's a project that you can complete right now that scratches all the itches for people that like to do system builds, and the parts are all readily available. Just like the services from today's sponsor, PCBWay, are readily available for you for all your custom PCB needs. Hand wiring your PCBs can be time consuming, difficult, and hard to repeat with precision. Etching your own circuit boards at home can be hit or miss, and you have to deal with all sorts of harsh, nasty chemicals. Next time, why not let PCBWay do the heavy lifting for you? PCBWay is a fully featured custom PCB prototyping service with over a decade of experience in prototyping and fabrication. Through their website, you can get an instant quote on a wide range of circuit board options, ranging from standard boards to flexible PCBs and even fully assembled circuits. Simply upload your design file, place your order, and they'll get to work on it. Many orders are ready to ship within the first 24 hours. First time customers to PCBWay get a $5 discount, meaning that your first board order is free. Check out PCBWay by clicking on the link in the description of this video. All right, well, thanks so much for sticking around till the end. I hope you enjoyed this build, and if you did, don't forget to toss me a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe because I've got a pretty unhealthy obsession with everything released by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and there's gonna be tons of this on the channel. In fact, if you spend some time poking around, you'll find all sorts of other Pi projects and cases all over the place. Alrighty guys, well, that's it for this one, but until next time, stay creative.